In this video, we're going to discuss the alpha of a stock. So alpha is just the difference between a security's return and the return that's predicted by the security market line. So remember, the security market line is the visual representation and the graphing of the capital asset pricing model. So with the cap M, we've got the expected return of security I is equal to the risk-free rate of return plus beta for that security times the market risk premium. Okay, so we can go and we can say, okay, what is the beta for different securities? And then what is the expected return for different securities? And we plot that, and that gives us a line that we call the security market line. And we've talked about that in different videos, so I won't go about I'll go on about it too much here. But here we've got our security market line, and we've got beta on the x-axis, we've got the expected return of the security on the y-axis, and then we've got the risk-free rate here. So this line that we have going out, that's the security market line. Now, if we have a situation where the market portfolio is efficient, all of the different stocks, so let's say we're talking about like Microsoft and Caterpillar and Walmart, they'll all plot at a different point on the security market line. So we'd have different points here, and they'd all re represent different stocks. So this right here, this one might correspond to, maybe that's a beta of 1.24, and maybe that's Microsoft, okay? And so then Microsoft, we could come over and say, okay, what is the expected return? Given that there's a beta of 1.24, maybe the expected return, maybe it's, uh, let's say, 12%. Now, as we go higher, as we get to higher points on the security market line, higher risk implies there's gonna be a higher expected return, okay? So we might have a situation, though, where there's a, a point that's plotted that's not on the line. It's not on the line at all. So, for example, let's let's take let's take this point right here, and let's say that this corresponds to eBay. Let's say that this is eBay, and let's just say that that corresponds to a beta. Let's say one point. Here, let me cross this out here so you don't get confused. Let's say it's a beta of 1.51. Okay, so that's the beta. So we tr we trace that up, and it comes to eBay, but eBay is not on the line. Normally, eBay maybe. And let me cross this out so we don't get confused. Normally, right here on that line, that beta of 1.51, we trace that up to the security market line, and then we trace it over. And let's say that it would come out to an expected return of 13%. And yet, eBay here with the beta of 1.51. It's not on the line, so it's not coming over to an expected return of 13%. Instead, it's coming over here, and we've got 15%. Okay, we've got 15%. So the difference here, hang with me on these drawings. So the difference see, between this point here and where it should be on the line here, the difference here, that is 2%. This is 15% minus 13%. What does this mean? Look eBay has a beta of 1.51. That's a measure of its systematic risk. Based on a capital asset pricing model, which is pictured here with the security market line, we've, we've, we've plotted it out, it should, eBay should have an expected return of 13% because this is the point here where it would be on the security market line. Yet eBay is not on the security market line. It is instead here. It is off the security market line. Conversely, you could have a point here that's below the security market line. Okay, Here we have what, what is called a positive alpha because actually the, the, the return is higher than what is predicted by the security market line for eBay. So eBay would have an alpha of 2%. This is a positive alpha for eBay. So it's, it's having a return that is higher, higher than that which is predicted by the, the capital asset pricing model and which is pictured with the security market line. Like I said, conversely, we could have some stock over here where actually the return is lower, where we say, okay, the, the return should be, it should be on the security market line. It's not, it's off the security market line. So the distance, when we look at the distance between the point and where it should be on the security market line, that is the alpha, okay? So if, and again, if the market portfolio is efficient, then all securities are going to be at some point along, they're gonna be here on the security market line. Every stock you can think of, Nike, whatever, they're all gonna end up on the security market line. However, if, if we, we might have a situation where we don't have all that, we have some that are off the security market line. And so that's where we have these stocks that have a non-zero alpha. 
And so if you think about it conceptually, if you're an investor and you see that, oh, there's a stock that is not on the security market line. If it has a positive alpha, if alpha is greater than zero, then you can improve on the market portfolio. Instead of just holding the market portfolio, you could buy, you could go and buy the stocks that have positive alphas. And then you could sell any of the stocks that have an alpha that is negative. So all the ones that are below any kind of any point that is below the security market line, that's going to be a negative alpha stock. And so you would want to sell those and then you would go and buy all the ones that have a positive alpha that are up here. And then you would actually be outperform. You would improve upon the market portfolio.